I'm very happy to announce that the new Advantage Door Hardware Design course has been released this week. In this video, I'd like to show you what this course is all about, what you will learn, and how to sign up. I've released the Advantage Door Hardware Design course under the Federville Education Platform, which was created by Robert Ferenek, who himself has really cool courses and a great YouTube channel. I'll leave links to this in the description below if you'd like to sign up to the Advantage Door Hardware Design course, as well as I also have the previous course from last year, the Mixed Signal Hardware Design with KiCat. If you'd like to learn more about the course content, you can either go to the Federville Education site or go to my website at phils lab.net forward slash courses. You can check out the details of this entire course. There's about 11 and a half hours of content and the course content listed in detail here. The Advanced Digital Hardware Design course walks you through the entire design of this AMD Xilinx Zinc system on chip based printed circuit board that I featured on this channel before. This course is tool agnostic, so it doesn't matter if you're using KiCad, Altium Designer, Eagle or whatever, but it will guide you through the main principles all the way from a system level design, schematic capture, PCB design layout and routing for high speed peripherals, interfaces and so on. Everything you need to pay attention to. This can be applied to FPGAs, system on chips, CPUs, advanced microcontrollers and so on. This particular board, which was designed specifically for this course, features a 400 pin BGA system on chip, which can run embedded Linux, is half FPGA. Attached to that is one gigabyte of DDR3 memory, and the course will show you all about termination, layout and routing, part choices and so on. We have a bunch of switching regulators, 0.5 millimeter pitch BGA eMMC memory, gigabit ethernet, USB high speed and more. The course will expose you to all of these ideas and how to incorporate these parts into your system. Lesson 1 gives an overall introduction to the course, what you'll be learning, as well as looking at the course hardware we saw at the beginning of this video called the Zetbrett. And this is the focus of the course, guiding you through how I went about designing this hardware, what to pay attention to, and this is of course applicable to any advanced digital hardware design. We also see that the course again is designed to be ECAD tool agnostic. You can follow along with your own design using whatever tool you're comfortable with. The target audience and prerequisites are also detailed. This is not a beginner course. This is for people who have experience designing their own circuitry and PCBs, for example, for microcontrollers and some basic digital systems that would like to step up their game and tackle high speed interfaces, BJ packages and so on. There's also, there are various course materials that come along with this course, as well as a certificate for successful completion and handing in screenshots of your own advanced digital hardware design. Once we have the basics out of the way, we can look at lesson two, which is the system level design, seeing why we even need to use FPGAs or system on chips and when we shouldn't use them, what that brings with it with regard to complexity and cost, what manufacturers and tools there are available and so on. Then, taking the Zetbread as an example, we'll go through the system specification, what requirements we need to set up, looking at reference designs and system on modules, and then doing a very basic high-level part selection procedure for all of the main elements on the board. Before we can dive deep into the PCB and schematics, Lesson 3 and Lesson 4 detail the absolute essentials that you'll need for any PCB design and any schematic design. Lesson 3 shows you how to create professional-level schematics, that are clearly organized, annotated properly, so not just you can understand the schematic, but that anyone else that needs to look at the schematic can understand it. Lesson four at one and a half hours in length gives you all of the fundamentals you need for high speed digital system design, including for example, BGA design basics and fan out. How do we size these particular vias? Why do we have these grounded vias known as transfer vias and how do we place them? How do we section our PCB? So how come all the power section is over here, ethernet is on the top right and so on? How do we do delay tuning? So all these squiggles and meanders you see. And how do we include then the package delays, for example, our FPJ or system on chip? I'll also show you how to do footprint designs using the data sheet and also the schematic symbol designs as well. As the Zetbrett is double-sided, I'll also show you some techniques of how to navigate that with through vias. Lesson five tells you all about build up, stack up and controlled impedance. Build up is essentially what materials do we use, what copper foils, prepregs, calls and dielectrics, how do we choose them and how do we use them to define controlled impedance stack ups. I'll go through all of the basics and how to talk to your manufacturer, how to get all this information, then also moving on to stack up design. So how do we know layer one should be signal, then ground, then power, then signal and so on. How do you design your own stack ups? Importantly for high speed digital design is of course impedance matching and we'll go through all of the basics showing you when it's necessary and why it's necessary, looking at critical lengths for analog and digital, 
control impedance basics, how do we even calculate this? How do you calculate it for microstrip traces, for strip line traces, both for single ended and of course differential pairs? Again, talking with your manufacturer, and I'll show you all the steps involved. Oftentimes we might need to use power planes as references, such as in the Tetbrit, and I'll show you when this is a good idea, what to watch out for, and when not to use these. I'll then also show you how I communicated with my manufacturer and discussed impedance control and figured out a build up together. Lesson six is one of my favorite lessons and this is on power and power distribution networks. Looking at all non-ideal elements, such as voltage regulator modules, traces, vias, planes, and capacitors, how do we size them? How do we choose the specific number of capacitors and where do they need to be placed and how do they need to be attached to various parts? We'll then also look at the switching regulators. How many do we need? How do we size them? And how do we know which voltage rails we need for these complicated digital parts? We'll also go through, for example, non-idealities of capacitors, so looking at their frequency characteristics, their derating, how we can model these non-idealities. And then also do a SPICE simulation of a simple power distribution network, looking at effects of trace widths, sizes, different types of capacitors, and how do we get this information from manufacturers, and what impact does it have on our power delivery system. In lesson seven, we'll look at the FPGA and system on chip config and IO. How can we figure out what all these pins mean and why do we need to pull some of them up or via certain value resistors? How do we design USB to UART and USB to JTAG circuitry? How do we do a pinout for the processing system and why do we need to attach all of these components? For FPGAs, how do we do the pinout? Where can we attach clocks? This is all discussed in lesson seven. Lesson eight then deals with DDR3 memory and termination. First of all, termination, how come we need these parallel termination resistors? What value? Why are we pulling this up to the specific voltage? And what do these decoupling capacitors do? We'll look at series and parallel termination, looking at VTT regulation and so on. Then we'll look at the whole aspect of DDR3 memory, looking at DDR basics, what signals are involved, how to do decoupling and power delivery, then how to do this fairly complicated flyby routing across these several layers, looking at delay tuning, and how we can incorporate termination into our DDR interfaces. Lesson nine is then concerned with the first high-speed peripheral. This is gigabit ethernet. Looking at the basics, what signals we have, how to route them, lay them out, the choice of a physical layer, which is our interface between our system on chip or FPGA and for example, an RJ45 connector. How do we figure out all these strapping resistor options? How do we feed clocks and what clock sources do we need? And how do we create the schematic? Then of course, also looking at the layout and routing of such a physical layer and the interfaces to the system on chip and FPGA and RJ45 connector. What do we need to take care of with regards to impedance control, diff pair routing, and so on. Lesson 10 will then examine the USB 2.0 high speed on the go system. Again, looking at what physical layers we have, how do we choose them? How do we set these up in a schematic? But then also how do we route this out? What do we need to take care of when it comes to ULPI interfaces and so on? This lesson, however, also covers eMMC memory, the basics, the SDIO interface, but quite interestingly, we'll look at this 0.5 millimeter pitch BGA and what techniques we can use to route this out without additional PCB cost. Lesson 11 then gives the final touches in manufacturing. So how do we do layer indexing? How do we add for digital markers? Looking at the edge stitching, why this is needed, copper poles on signal layers and so on. We'll also see how to generate manufacturing documentation and assembly documentation, again, regardless of the tool we're using, what's important and what you need to communicate to your manufacturer. Also following the ordering process, for example, getting a quote, adding design information, and what the costs and lead times were for a design such as this. This is a very dense course with a lot of information, again, about 11 and a half hours worth of content, and I think a fairly reasonable price given all of the information. We'll be looking at all the aspects that it takes to design an advanced digital system, such as the Zetbret, and I really do hope you like the course and it teaches you many new skills. Please check out the link in the description if you'd like to sign up. By selling these courses, this allows me to keep making free content on YouTube and really supports the channel. So thank you very much for your support.